Wouldn't it be great if you can get drone shots like this or this without even having to fly a drone? In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this. If you're new to my channel, my name is James and I make reviews and tutorials on various software including video editing as well as AI. Let's dive in. The drone shots that you've seen are created by Google Earth Studio. You, all you need to do is head on over to earth.google.com and of course you will need to have a Google account or a Gmail account to access this. Once you're on this page, you will be able to see two. One is either a blank project and open all project. If you're new, I suggest that perhaps you start with a quick start will actually give you a good idea how the controls work in Google Earth Studio. And there are several templates that you can use, for example, zoom in, orbit, spiral, and etc. Over here, you have something called fly in and orbit. So I'm just going to use spiral for this, but you are free to try whichever one you want. Select this and click on start. Next, select your point of interest, or you can also rotate the globe to a location that you want. Let's try the Sydney Opera House. So once you have selected the location, click next and it will show you something like this. So this is an overview of how your drone shot will look like. So here you see a few settings. One is the start radius. For If you look at the map order on the left, you see that the radius is quite big. And this red dot here is your target or the location that you have selected. Here, the drone would theoretically fly in from this location and start to spiral into getting a close-up. So this would be the uh, radius of the start and end. You can change it here or you can change it later. So should you want to uh, start at a smaller radius, you can control it. Next is actually the attitude. So you can also uh, change the attitude, whether you want it to be higher or lower. You can change it by changing the sliders. Okay, so let's just leave it alone for now and just click on next and you will see something like this. Now right now it's asking you to input a, a time. So for example, you want to put say 30 seconds. You can do that and I click on OK. And this is the layout you will see. So if you take a look at this, your play buttons are here and you can also uh, loop backward. Now, first thing that I would suggest is that you go to your file and change some of the project settings. The project settings will allow you to set the dimensions of your video, whether you want uh, 1080p or you want say uh, 2 or 4K, you can set that. And the number of frames, now I'm going to change frames to time code, so it's 30 seconds, it's easier for me, so it depends on you whether you prefer time code. Next is the frame rate, so I'm going to set it at 60 so that it gives me a greater control for example, if I want to slow down anything later on, I can slow down up to 50% and it will still look good. Okay, I haven't done anything to the video, so it's okay whether I leave it on or off. However, if you have started making changes to the video and you have set keyframes, then it might be a good idea to uh, turn this on. Alright, so let's just click on done. On the left, you'll notice that there are attributes of the camera position, the longitude, the latitude as well as the attitude. And as we zoom down, you see that this changes, okay? And there is also a uh, camera targeting is enabled, okay? Which means, where is the camera looking at? Okay, so now the drone is actually focused on the Sydney Opera House. Now, there are other uh, uh, attributes you can change as well. For example, the camera pan and tilt, and you can add other attributes as well. For example, if you want to adjust your camera's view or wheel or the angle of wheel, uh, which means if you have uh, decided to start from a wide angle and maybe later on you want to have a sort of a telephoto effect, you can change that. So if you want to add that, you can add this here, the time of day, clouds and also ocean overlay. Since we are flying over oceans then, uh, maybe let's do oceans overlay as well as clouds, satellite and 3Ds are hidden. Okay, so let's do all of this. Roll, I do not need to adjust the camera uh, roll. So I'm just going to leave it and click on done. Now next, let's go to this frame here. Now this gives you a, the option for the opening a separate window. And this window gives you different control. Imagine right now you are hovering directly above and this is where the camera is uh, moving. Okay, 
So this is the position of the camera and this triangle is showing the view that the camera is seeing as it starts to spiral down into the Sydney Opera House. Okay, now you can change this. Now over here, let's zoom in and let's say you want to change the view of this. You can make changes to these key points and you, your drone will actually fly in a different position as you can see as I drag this. Okay, let's say you want to zoom in over here. We can slow, we can make changes on the, the pan and tilt as well as the field of view. So for example, let's uh, zoom in. I'm going to add a keyframe. So right now, the field of view is 20. Okay, so this will be probably 20% or rather 20 degrees. But if I want to zoom in, I'm going to change this to say, let's put it as 15. Alright, and then let's say once you are over here again, you want to zoom back out. You can set this as well. So this is how the drone will look. Okay. Now if you change it to the camera, it will swap left to right. If you change it to north and south. So basically, this is what the camera is flying in. It's flying in at an attitude. Okay. And the tri triangle uh, is actually showing where the uh, camera is pointing. Okay. So it's pointing here. So let's say you're going to change this to the camera. So you know that when you play this, the camera is actually pointing to the Sydney Opera House and uh, making uh, adjustments to it. All right. So you can see it in a spatial 3D uh, space where the what the camera is doing. So if you want to adjust your height, you can actually adjust it here as well. All right. So let's move the camera here. Okay. So if you want your camera higher, you can just drag this higher or lower. All right. And there are also handles here that help you to adjust the curve. Right. So here you would, uh, when the curve is steeper means your camera was, or your drone is actually diving down. Okay. So let's pull this back. So you have you can have all this kind of effect, all right. So here you can also make the changes if you want to have clouds visible, and whether you want to make your clouds uh, invisible, hidden, you can see that. Now this will only affect if there are clouds there. If they are not, it wouldn't have any effect. <coughs> so same as the 3D buildings as well. So right now, if there are 3D buildings, it is will be visible. Right. So if you go to say the south, this is will be uh, looking at the camera from the south. Here will be from the east. You will see the path of the drone or the camera on the drone. Do this. Okay. So this is will be the west. So if you're not sure, uh, stay on the north first before you make too many changes. So this is what you're gonna uh, see. Next is the camera rotation. So here, uh, should you want to make here the camera is panning and tilting. However, if you want to make some changes to the pan and tilt of the camera, uh, you can as well. Say over here, perhaps you want to make the camera, make the drone fly lower. So let's put the keyframe for this. If you make any mistake, you can undo it by pressing Ctrl Z. This is actually the attitude of the drone. So let's say we want to lower it by 500 uh, meters. You can see that. So let's say I want to lower it and Continue to create another keyframe to lower it further to uh, 380. Okay, and you can also uh, tilt the camera so that it starts to look up. Let's say now it's at 60 over, uh, degrees. Let's look at. Okay, so what is going to happen is that we will have a glimpse of the bridge. Now, once you are done with editing or rather should i say creating your drone shot you can now render it I click on render and you can either do an image sequence which will create a series of uh, photos or you can render it as an mp4 uh, sydney all right 
So cloud renders means you're going to render it to the cloud and when the video is done, uh, Google Earth Studio will send you an email for you to download that. All right. So the dimensions are set here. The frames 10 to 1008. Now attribution is required for using Google Earth Studio so you can just place it there. And I suggest just leave it there because there's uh, copyright and as you when you sign up, actually Google will tell you all this. Here you can have map style whether you want it to be clean. Now when you want to have everything, you will have something like markers. So the position. So in certain circumstances, you may want to have everything. In circum certain circumstances, you may not. So uh, if you just want a clean drone shot, I suggest you use clean. Uh, texture quality use high and if you want to use this video on YouTube and use a VR or virtual reality you can actually turn this on I'm just going to leave it there uh, as a normal and click on submit now it will take some time for uh, Google Studio Earth to process this video once it's done it will send you an email and let's just let me show you what I have done in the past I've downloaded this video before so this is one I've done that shows uh, the demo of the Marina Bay in Singapore. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you like it, do give it a thumbs up and check out what's on the screen right now for other tools and tips on creating videos and other and using AI as well.